Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. Father Reed is not here. He is off doing great work for Catholic TV, but Kevin and myself are. And Kevin, we have a wonderful show. Speaking of great, Jay, we have two great guests on the show today. Danielle Bean is here. She's going to be talking about Mom's Day Away coming up on April 2nd. We also have Archbishop Timothy Brolio of the Archdiocese Military Services. We're going to be talking to him a little later on. And among th other things, that is, uh, he's going to be talking about the need for chaplains. Mm, also some news from you. Can't wait to see That's that. Right. All that and much more right now on This Is The Day. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. So glad that you tuned in, and I think you are too, because we have a great show. Joining me is my wonderful friend, Kevin Nelson. How are you? Jay, I'm doing good. Glad to... You put me to shame, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, still we're into the green. You mm -hmm. know, it's all week long. It's not just yesterday. And, uh, you are Irish through and through, I, uh, aren't you? Look, I get the, the kids gave me this. Oh, now it's, you're really uh, going to put me to shame. It's called the Big Shamrock. <laughs> are you the, are you the big shamrock? Is that you? Are you the big shamrock? It's uh, it's a little tight. I I might lose consciousness during the show, <laughs> but uh. well, if your hand turns purple, we'll just call the EMTs and hope for the best. Oh, that's no. I I don't think I have a single. No, yeah. I don't have one green thing on. But me, maybe so. yesterday you were. You no, know, during, didn't well, have that either. Okay. And, and my middle well. name is Patrick. Wow. So, Ouch. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's tough. Hey, the big thing happened actually at the. Cathedral of the Holy Cross. I say congratulations to the new program that's being launched. Yeah, the uh, Theological Institute of New Evangelization, and uh, actually going to be talking a little bit more about that in the news. But um, it's a great uh, way to, um, you know, have people, laity, um, deacons, um, religious as well, can um, take courses and uh, learn more about the new evangelization. They're offering a master's course in that. And then our old program is underneath that as well, Master of Arts and Ministry, and they offer um, uh, catechetical um, courses as well, certificates that people can uh, take. And so it's a great initiative, and uh, Father uh, Christopher O'Connor is going to be the president of that. We're going to be talking about that a little bit more uh, mm. later on in the news. And look, we have the results of that Master of Arts and Ministry program. <laughs> I don't know if that's a I selling yeah, point I, or I not. I think we're trying to Maybe promote it, it Jay, not... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you were an excellent student. Actually, Are Bonnie's right over there, too, and yeah. she was in it, yeah. too. Yeah. Bonnie was, Bonnie just, she ran the class, yeah. ultimately. <laughs> she was. Hey, you know what? We have the prayer box here, and we just always remind you on Fridays that we ask you to think of all those people at home who have sent into the prayer box, and it just is so full because people need prayers. There's so many people with challenges, and a lot of times they're not asking for prayers for themselves. They're asking for prayers for other people, and I know we were talking before the show, and you want to get a name in there too. Yeah, the, like uh, appreciate people if they could say a prayer for uh, Deb uh, and her family. Um, she is um, struggling. She's been struggling for a couple of years and uh, has taken a turn for the worse uh, with cancer. And she's got a boy that's in uh, Andrew's grade and a younger one who's about two and uh, a couple of older kids. So. Um, it's really a struggle for them right now, so I ask you to pray for her. Yeah. That's tough. You know, we were, we were talking, as, as I was saying, and uh, any time I hear about a, a mom or a dad who have young kids and is sick, it just breaks my heart, mm. and that just is a heartbreaker. So once again, pray for the Deb and pray for all those who send in. And, you know, one of the, the highlights for me of the program, besides seeing you, of course, <laughs> except when you're in green and you have the big shamrock <laughs> on your It's a good thing I didn't wear my wrist. hat. Like <laughs> hat. I'm surprised you didn't. <laughs> well, you know, we even have the, the thing over there, too. The, what's the that? Gingerbread, gingerbread house. house. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. We have letters, and I love the letters. You have the first one. Kat. Thank you for setting the stage for our 40 days of Lent. Father Reed's Lenten Reflections with St. Therese arranged my experience of Ash Wednesday perfectly. Thank you and your wonderful staff for providing a Lenten journey for us. Mm. Yeah, and we are in the Lenten journey. We are. Hey, hey here's an email, and I always enjoy the emails. Uh, this is from Delaware. Wow. Wow. Uh, I am only able to view Catholic TV over the internet, but even at that, I was without my computer for seven months. My notebook and pen are busy for my teachings, and once again, I am able to have church brought to me. Glad to finally be back on board, reconnected, and charged up. 
ready to face my crosses with a recharged mindset and an open heart. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Hugs and kisses to your entire staff. Hugs and kisses right back to you. Here's a big hug to you. Thanks so much, Lisa, for writing in and for mm. watching on CatholicTV.com. Uh, we're glad that we can bring that to you, and that's part of what we try to do is bring programming for, for reflection, to help you with your faith, and so you can learn more about your faith, because the more you learn, the more you're going to love it. All the new technology is great. I saw Father Reed and Deacon Dick on the Sunday Mass this week. I just love Deacon Dick's homily, and he doesn't sing too bad either. Well, let's we'll make sure he <laughs> hears that. His homilies are always so great and meaningful. He's a special person, Father Reed. Old Jay, he's always talking about his age, and Smiling Kevin are doing such a good job. <laughs> we'll call you Smiley and me old man, <laughs> yeah. I guess. That's what that comes down to. Old Jay, old Jay, I like old that. Can old I Jay, we'll just say Okay, OJ. I'm going to talk about my age one more time, and this is where I'm going to talk about it. I was just with Father Reed, and I said, why do you keep calling me old every program? And now you're calling me old too, Mr. Smiley. I'm, ju I'm just reading the letters, Jay. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I think that's a plant. Uh, this is from Margaret. Thank you for your coverage of Bishop Christopher Coyne's ordination. Your ministry is crucial to our mission as a church. I had the pleasure of attending the ordination with my family, friends, and fellow parishioners by the way of Catholic TV. It brought us all closer to the bishop, one another, and more importantly, our God. And that's from Margaret. And you're so right, Margaret. And I have to tell you, we are big fans of Father Coyne here because he's done programs. Uh, I actually had him in class, so did Kevin and Bonnie. And he is just a wonderful guy. Great loss to this archdiocese, but a great addition to the diocese out in Indiana. If you'd like to write us, it's real easy to do. Write us at Catholic TV, 34 Chestnut Street, Box 9196, Watertown, Massachusetts, 02471. Or you can email us at thisistheday at catholictv.org. Always love to get your emails and your letters from all over the country. And we really appreciate you taking the time to do that because we know how busy you guys are. Hey, Smiley, how you doing? Good, old Jay. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're not saying O.J. It's, yeah, I like old O.J. is better than O.J. Kevin, what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? All right. Thanks, Jay. Hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. And we begin from the Vatican. Pope Benedict XVI, in a message marking the 150th anniversary of Italian unity, said that while the unity of Italy meant the demise of the papal states, Catholicism was one of the key forces forging an Italian identity. In the Pope's letter delivered by Cardinal Tarsicio Bertoni, Vatican Secretary of the State to Italian President Giorgio Napolitano, the Pope wrote that the national identity of Italians, so rooted in Catholic traditions, provided the most solid base for attaining political unity. March 17th marked the 150th anniversary of the proclamation of a sovereign Italian state in 1861. The Pope said that while on an institutional level, Italy and the Vatican were forced to find a way to coexist peacefully, Italian unity succeeded and the Church continued to thrive because there was never any strong opposition between pro-unity Italians and Italian Catholics. They were the same people. In news now from around the world, in a written speech released to journalists on March 17th, the president of the Pontifical Council for Migrants and Travelers, Archbishop Antonio Valio, said that Jordan needs to enact legal reforms that would allow Iraqi refugees to work and establish some kind of economic security. Iraqi refugees in Jordan are considered to be temporary visitors who do not have a clear legal status. As a result, it is difficult for them to renew their visas and to find work legally. The Archbishop said this legal limbo means the Iraqi refugees find themselves struggling to pay rent, buy food and get medical treatment. Jordan, whose population numbers 6.5 million people, hosts about 500,000 Iraqi refugees. The Archbishop was to deliver the speech during a meeting in Amman today, March 18th, with Catholic organizations working in Jordan. And the Archbishop was to tell the Catholic organizations, including Jesuit Refugee Service and Caritas, which work with migrants and refugees, that they can be a precious instrument in affording migrants not only material and spiritual support, but also giving newcomers a chance to share and become active participants in realizing their full human potential. In news now from around the country, New York Archbishop Timothy Dolan, president of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, in a letter to Japanese Archbishop Leo Jun Ikenaga of Osaka, assured him of the prayers and solidarity of the U.S. Catholic Church amid the ongoing rescue and relief efforts in his nation. Archbishop Dolan said that we commend the Church and the people of Japan to the intercession of Mary, the mother of Jesus, asking her to care for all of those left in conditions of suffering because of the quake and the aftershocks. 
Japanese official, uh, church officials, that is, are setting up an emergency center to coordinate humanitarian aid operations in Sendai, the area most devastated by the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. Bishop Martin Tetsu Haraga of Sendai and the diocesan chancellor, uh, Father Peter Shiro Komatsu, will be the director and vice director of the center, and a caritas worker will be there stationed in, to coordinate the aid work. Bishop Gerald Kakanis of Tucson, Arizona, who is the chairman of the CRS board, said the U.S. Bishop's Catholic Relief Services is responding to the tragedy by working with Caritas Japan and by receiving donations. In a statement, Bishop Kakanis said that the funds will be used for the immediate humanitarian, humanitarian needs of the most vulnerable and support the local Catholic Church in its ongoing mission. Catholics interested in supporting CRS relief efforts can visit crs.org Japan. And finally in the news, yesterday at the Cathedral of the Holy Cross in Boston, St. John's Seminary announced it was establishing a new institute of a faith formation and also offering a new academic degree. Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, along with the rector of St. John's, Bishop Arthur Kennedy, were on hand to make the announcement. The institute will be named the Theological Institute for a New Evangelization, Tyne, and it will offer a Master of Theological Studies for the new evangelization degree, as well as continue to offer the Master of Arts and Ministry degree and non-degree certificate programs, which includes the catechetical certificate. The programs are for laity, deacons, and professed religious. The new institute's president will be Father Christopher O'Connor. The institute encompasses the programs St. John's offers for those who are not seminarians, providing theological and catechetical formation for the evangelization of the modern world. An open house for both degrees will be held at 7 p.m. on March 24th in Brighton, Massachusetts. The press conference was followed by a mass at the cathedral in honor of St. Patrick, who is the patron saint of the Archdiocese. Cardinal O'Malley was the principal celebrant in his annual mass on the feast of St. Patrick. Well, that is all the information we have for you on this Friday, March 18th, 2011. We're going to send it right back over to Jay with more of This is the Day. Kevin, I have a new idea for the Mass around St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah? What's that? Now? I think you should do it with a brogue. Oh, Yeah, I think you should just do it. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> Can you do a brogue with a name like Nelson? I hope so. Uh, yeah, you know, I'd probably, you know, then embarrass Irish people around the world. <laughs> <laughs> you never embarrass Irish people around the world. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Hey. Well, Kevin had the chance to speak with Archbishop Brolio uh, about certain topics that I think you'll find very interesting. Let's take a listen. Well, thank you. And uh, joining us now is Archbishop Timothy uh, Brolio, who is the, um, actually the Archbishop for the Archdiocese for the Military Services. And we're happy to have you here, Archbishop. And uh, talk about the, um, the need of the servicemen and women. And uh, there, um, you know, there's, a, there's a great amount of, of need for these young men and women, and especially during uh, you know, situations that they find themselves in. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of uh, maybe looking for faith, and uh, if you could speak on that and the importance of having somebody there to talk to. Yes, it's it's very important, especially um, it's important in the in the forward areas uh, where troops are deployed, but it's also very important back home because obviously where a family member is gone, um, you still need a Catholic program and a Catholic presence on the bases at home. Uh, to help the families deal uh, with the separation and also to help them deal then with the reintegration when the loved one returns home. Um, and it's also obviously in the war zone, uh, men and women are, are faced with life and death situations and so they are asking questions which are uh, fundamentally important, questions about their own existence, questions about God, questions about life after death. And it's important that we have priests there to, to counsel them, to respond, and of course also to provide them with the sacraments, that ab above all. Um, and the problem is, of course, when the priest is not there, if someone is looking for spiritual guidance, um, he's liable to turn to whomever he finds. And sometimes, uh, obviously in the military, they're supposed to respect uh, your religious preference, but obviously that's a, a fine line yeah. which some uh, religious groups are not, uh, don't have too much difficulty in crossing that line and perhaps looking for, uh, uh, for followers and, and taking them in. And obviously if the Catholic priest is not present um, and then there's no one else to, to provide that, that service, they 
could possibly go to uh, someone from another faith group. Yeah, and, and there has been incidents, and, and as you mentioned too, with people coming back, there has been, you know, it's been in the news a lot too, the, the recent rise in, in some suicides as well, and post-traumatic stress disorder, and how important faith can play in people's lives as they sort of reintegrate into society. Yes, that is, that is very, very important, uh, particularly with the issue of, of suicide. Frequently, a priest or a minister is the one person who can uh, keep his foot in the door and perhaps uh, help a person resolve those difficulties and those tensions in a way which is not uh, life-harming or, or life-threatening. Uh, it is so important uh, also um, the incidence of post-traumatic stress is is very very high uh, to help people so that it does not become a disorder so that they deal with this in a in a sane way and again uh, a chaplain is the one person that anyone can go to who does not have to report anything to the military hierarchy he is, um, he is a privileged communicator. And so that's very important, too, because servicemen and women know that. They know that they can go to the priest or they can go to the chaplain and not be affected by uh, their career is not affected. Yeah. And I know you asked uh, yesterday as well for a, a day of prayer. Maybe if you could speak on that. And... Yes. Um, I avoided the temptation to suggest a specific date because I think that without... Um, making a wide consultation that was not a good idea but I did ask the bishops to um, to select a date in their own dioceses and eparchies uh, in which they might dedicate to prayer and penance for a lasting peace and also so that these young people who are traumatized in any way don't turn to to suicide because that has become an amazing uh, an enormous problem in uh, in our military and finally, if uh, uh, somebody wants to learn more about the Archdiocese and maybe uh, someone who's interested in uh, possibly pursuing uh, being a chaplain, how would they go about doing that? Well, probably the best way, obviously, to become a chaplain, the best person to talk to is a recruiter, either for the Army, the Navy, or the Air Force. But for information about uh, the Archdiocese, we do have a website, www.millarch.org. There, there are various options which will tell people more about the Archdiocese and will also give them indications of where they might turn to if they are interested in, in helping us or in perhaps even becoming a chaplain. Thank you so much, Archbishop, for taking the time to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. And we're going to send her back to the rest of This is the Day. And we are back, and to Archbishop Rolio, thank you very much for being on This Is Day. Really appreciate it. And Kevin, as usual, very good job. Well, joining us now is Danielle Bean, and she's here to talk about Mom's Day Away on April 2nd. Danielle, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad to be here. You know, we're going to have to talk about days, Dad's Day Away one time, too. All right, Mom's First, <laughs> We'll talk about Mom's First. Hey, listen, as, as a uh, dad with children, Mom's Need a Day Away, but we'll, we'll get into that. Tell us, uh, you work at uh, faithandfamily.com, a great spot for anyone grappling with. Faithandfamilylive.com. Live.com, yeah. uh, right. which I was on today, by the way. Excellent. On, it's a great site. Yes. And I, I went to your site, and I read about you and everything. Um, but as a busy mom, you know the need for time away. Tell us about Mom's Day Away. Well, Mom's Day Away is our very first event that Faith and Family Magazine and faithandfamilylive.com are sponsoring. And what we really intend it to be is a day for moms to come away together, take a break from their daily lives and their daily responsibilities, connect with other moms who share their values, have a little time for prayer, reflection. We're going to have some great talks there by Rachel Balducci, who's an excellent blogger and writer and mm -hmm. speaker and author, and Jennifer <laughs> Fulweiler, who is the same. And I'm going to be giving a talk that day as well. We're going to have times for talks and times for discussions, which moms love to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then time also set aside for personal reflection and prayer and connecting with Christ. So our hope is that moms will take this time on this Mom's Day away and really just rejuvenate themselves and refresh themselves and come away refreshed and ready to give their all to their vocations once again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how important is it to, to take a break like that for moms and to sort of uh, get spiritually pampered? Uh, and, uh, and maybe if you could talk about um, 
is it just moms or can other people go as well? Yeah, well, it is exclusively for women. Yeah. Um, but as John Paul II so eloquently reminded us, all women are mothers and all mm -hmm. women are called to vocations of motherhood, whether it's physical or not. Um, all women have that feminine genius, which is part of it is that self-giving love and that sacrificial giving and the natural generosity and the nurturing instinct and um, so whether moms are physical physical mothers or not, they're definitely welcome at our, our Moms Day Away because it's meant to refresh women in that feminine vocation and strengthen those feminine virtues of generosity and nurturing. You know, it's a difficult world out there today, and, and I see it with my own wife, uh, who's probably watching this, so I have to be careful about this, but <laughs> I, I see that the stress and you with the children who we all love, and yet, you know, it is stressful bringing up children, and to be a mom, and a lot of working moms out there today, how do you take all of that to be a great mom, to work, and yet fit God into that equation? How do you do it? Yeah, that's the great big question, yeah. isn't it? And I think that that's what so many Catholic women struggle with. I mean, we come to this and we want to give our all to our vocations. We want to be the best wife. We want to be the best mother. And it's a very naturally depleting vocation if you don't take that time away to spiritually refresh yourself. And I think that moms need that reminder that it's not a selfish thing to take that time for prayer, take that time not even for prayer, but just for your personal recreation and connecting with other women. We need each other. We women need each other and we need that support support and encouragement that we can only get from one another. We can't expect our spouses to meet all of our social needs and our, our needs for support and encouragement. So we need to get together. We need to make time for that. And it's not something selfish you're doing. It's something you're doing to refresh yourself so that you, there will be something there to give to your family. Mm -hmm. Talk about the day um, maybe a little bit more and the nuts and bolts and uh, how you came up with the sort of um, strategy for the day. Well, we really just thought, you know, for our first ever event with, with Faith and Family, we wanted it to be a chance where, you know, for years women have been connecting online on faithandfamilylive.com and there's a really wonderful, beautiful community that's been built up there. So we really wanted to have a real life, a coming to life of that where people that you've met online characters, people, personalities you've only known online can come to life and you can make real life connections, which is so vital and so important. So that really was one of the, the main things we want moms to take away from this day is making those kinds of connections and friendships with other women come to life for you in a real life way. So that was really what my goal was for the day. And then we kind of thought, well, what do moms really need? And what would get moms to, to want to be there for this day on April 2nd? And it's this idea of just taking this one day time for you. This is time for you and we want the moms who come there to feel like they're being taken care of for that day. We've got a special lunch planned and other little surprises. Like There will be chocolate there, I guarantee <laughs> it. So, you know, we're, we're really planning to have a good time and, but at the same time, Jesus is going to be there and he's going to be That's present the in, the, in the Eucharist and adoration and the opportunity and the sacraments and um, the opportunity to go to confession and so really we want, we want to bring women together and together we want to bring all of us closer to Christ. You know what I really like about it too is that I think a lot of times at home, let's say, I'll just use the home environment, you can feel alone, that you're all by yourself. Here you are, a mom, and no one else is experiencing what you're experiencing. No one else is experiencing where's God and how can I bring God in closer and, and the kids, they're just, they're driving me crazy. It seems like a great time where women can get together and bond and relate stories and find out that they're not alone. Is exactly. that true? Exactly. That is so true. And sometimes that's all you really want or need yeah. is to know that other people who share your values share your circumstances as well and that you're not alone in this situation. So, I mean, really, I, I always say that the, the call to Catholic family life is uniquely joyful, but it's uniquely challenging too. So we need to keep that in mind. You know, it's okay to say that it's hard. Yeah. It's okay to say that you struggle with it sometimes. And getting together with other women who also struggle can be a, a real shot in the arm when you need it. Yeah, because we all struggle. Now, I want a sneak preview though. What is your particular talk going to be about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be talking about um, Mary's fiat and saying yes to God in all the little moments of your day. And that's an important way for moms to connect with, with both Mary and with, with Christ because I think you know, we have our busy schedules and we have our, our you know, constant interruptions in family life. So it's important to make that kind of prayer where that's constantly, whatever the interruption is, saying yes to God in yeah. moment by moment throughout your day. I think that's an important way for moms to pray. And she was such a great example to all of us, Mary. What a great example she had. You can't this go wrong there. Strong, strong person who just was so loyal to God and of course to her son, Jesus. Where can people find out more? They can find out more at faithandfamilylive.com. You go there and there'll be a link to our registration page for the event on April 2nd. Well, 
Good luck to you. I think it's very important. I'm going to tell my wife about this. She's probably watching I right now. I hope to see her there. Yeah, she's probably watching that would be great. with my son, Ethan. The two of them will be watching. Thanks so much for being with us, Danielle, today. Thanks for having Thanks. me. And we'll be back with more. This is a day right after this. Stay with us. Great. Most of you won't recognize me or my real name. It's Norma McCourty. I'm also known as Jane Rowe the plaintiff in the Supreme Court case, Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion in America and changed our nation in an unprecedented way. Back in 1973, I was a very confused 21-year-old with one child and facing an unplanned pregnancy. At the time, I fought to obtain a legal abortion, but the truth be told, I have three daughters and have never had an abortion. However, upon knowing God, I realized that my case, which legalized abortion on demand, was the biggest mistake of my life. You see, abortion has eliminated 50 million innocent babies in the U.S. alone since 1973. Abortion scars an untold number of post-abortive mothers, fathers, and families, too. You read about me in history books, but now I'm dedicated to spreading the truth about preserving the dignity of all human life, from natural conception to natural death. Back. And Kevin, very what a, how refreshing was that to listen to Danielle and know that they're doing that great work up there. Yeah, and, and it's a it's a great idea and it's a great way for moms. And I encourage you if you can, uh, you know, if you have the time to, to stop by and get uh, rejuvenated. I don't think we give moms enough credit. I have to be honest. I think it's easier for me to come here every day than it is for Shirley every day at home because it is a workout. Yeah, it's a workout to be. Yeah, you are. De children are dependent on you t really twenty four seven. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess when I get home, though, it's kind of a handoff at that point. But you it, deal it, with them it, now. It deal with them. <laughs> hey, we really would be remiss. I know you spoke about it in the newscast. If, as we talk about the prayer box and Deb, who you mentioned, uh, who has so many challenges, if we do not again mention all of those people in Japan and also in Libya, uh, but Japan will focus on right now, and the suffering that is happening over in Japan and the loss of life and the continue the the count just continues to rise and and all of the terrible things that are going on over there it is such a tragedy yeah. we need to remember these people in it's, our prayers uh, it's scary uh, you know and and now with the uh, nuclear um, um, situation as well and the, and the reactor and you know there's just so many difficulties uh, for them to face uh, in the future and 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 right now so uh, we just keep our prayers going for them and the whole country and remember this that you might be home alone right now, but you're never alone because God is with you, walking beside you during your challenging times. So remember that you're loved. And know that all of us here at Catholic TV will remember you in our thoughts and prayers, and we ask that you do the same. And thank you, as always, for your affirmation and support of Catholic television, no matter where you're watching this, because it makes a difference. Have a great day.